Well, hello, friends, neighbors. John, your whiskey neighbor here. It's Saturday. Well, welcome to the Whiskey Nook. Today, we're going to look at another rye, and a rye that I've been looking forward to for quite some time. This is going to be some thoughts, I guess my thoughts, on Lot 40 Dark Oak. Before we get going, I just have to say a huge thanks to my cousin, Sean, who unsolicited and out of the blue sent me this bottle from BC. So thanks, Sean. All of you, if you've got Lot 40 Dark Oak, please pour it. It's so nice to kind of sip along and think, hey, do we share any of the same kind of thoughts or same notes? And if not, I think any rye will do. This will be my, uh, you know, we'll nose it, we'll taste it. It'll be my thoughts on Lot 40 Dark Oak. Three, four. Thanks for staying with me through the break. I need a little bit longer opener there, but I just have to say, what a, what a guy, eh? Thanks, Sean. Um, you know, I've been looking forward to this video for some time. I, I will say right off the top, I have a bias toward enjoying Lot 40 Rye. Ever since I tasted it, it just has stood out as a really an excellent, excellent uh, rye, often very affordable, and it's pretty cool that it's Canadian. So this is, as I understand it, you know, it's their regular Lot 40, 100% rye. I believe it's unmalted, open it up with some enzymes. They go through two distillations, right? They do a column and then they do a pot still. And I heard an interview, I thought it was with Trini and C, uh, but it might have been with Mark Bylock on the whiskey, um, on that whiskey podcast. But, uh, you know, where he really talked about how it's that pot still that allows them to get the cut, the middle cut that they want to capture the flavors that they're looking for. Then, aged in new charred American oak. Now, the regular Lot 40 is charred in number two. This, uh, regular maturation, how long? You know, I really don't know. I feel, I always feel like it's about a five-year-old whiskey, but I don't know why I feel that way. Um, then they, they age this in, and I don't know how long, more, in a number four barrel char. So the regular Lot 40, it's aged regular, and then you know, they, they finish it really, in a sense, in a, a number four char barrel. Uh, so that obviously has an effect. Uh, it is a little darker, and uh, they release this at 48%. Hey, let's get at some whiskey. Hope you have something in your glass. On the nose. I find this nose really fruity. Just like big, luscious fruit. Whatever that is. Uh, you know, dark cherry, almost a grape, like really bursty fruit. Spicing already on the nose. Actually, that one I really, <laughs> really breathed in. Singed just a little bit. So, you know, 48%. It's got some alcohol in it. Uh, but some, some darker cinnamons. Uh, you know, maybe I'm, yeah, darker cinnamons. Mmm. So spicing, dark cinnamon, um, slight bready note almost on the nose. No, no, flaky cinnamon bunny note on the nose. But really, for me, the nose, all about the fruit. Now let's try the palate. Cheers. Oh. For me, it's going to play between bold spicing. Yeah, cinnamon, but some savory baking spices type in there, like, like clove on a ham or something in a stew. You know, it's got some really savory spices and back into that fruit, kind of back and forth. A lot of dark fruit on this. Now, that, that flaky note or pastry I was trying to get is actually kind of gone on the nose. But there is uh, suddenly a bit of a jump into a sweetness that's slightly artificial for me. Yep, kind of a cherry cola note. Again on the palate. If anything, it added a little more spice. Now I will say the fruit can push into a little bit of an artificial note. A little bit, like I mentioned, you know, the, the cherry cola in, in the in the 
And the palette, it's almost like that, you know, big red cinnamon gum. I've used that to describe right before, I know, but it, it, to me, it's a little bit of that, okay, slightly artificial note to the fruit. Spicing carries into the finish. In fact, it's one of the strongest part of the early finish for me. Really nice spice. Starts to dry. Oak comes out at me. As I keep talking, kind of let it breathe. Okay, I've had a couple of sips. Now I can see like what's hanging around. What hangs around for me is a nice clean drying note. Fair amount of oak, little char, spice. The fruit is kind of gone at the end for me. Just interesting because, you know, at the beginning, the nose is all about the fruit, the palate for me, really a lot of spice and the ending, more oak, which is a pretty good journey for a rye. I have to say, uh, I really like the journey that this uh, dark oak has taken me on tonight. I'm sure you can tell by my general demeanor. I like it. I have to be a little bit critical. Now, I'm not super far in this bottle, but I actually, you know, had some. And the first time I opened it up, it was with Sean and Brad. And boy, that was a, it was a great evening. And I think we all loved it. As I've been sipping it a little more over the next, you know, few weeks and such, it's been open a while. I've fallen out of that really enamored, like, oh, this is so amazing. Now I'm like, okay, good thing I stayed with it. This is a really good rye. But there is a fairly strong artificial cherry, cherry cola, something going on in it. And the level of spice is really significant, which normally I really like, but it can build up on me. And I'm going to pull my rating down a little bit from where I was when I opened it up. And I think it's a solid four-star rye, which is a great score. And if you happen to be blessed to be in a market that still has this, it came out only in BC, and then it came out only in Ontario. What about us middle provinces there, Dr. Don Livermore? Um, but anyways, as I said, cousin in BC sent it to me. Uh, so it's hard to get a hold of. I think it was priced right. It's around that $65. Uh, would I buy it? I'd buy it in a heartbeat. Does it have some things that I think might keep it from being kind of universally all oh, the best rye you've ever had? Yeah, I do. I think some of those edges that I mentioned is going to keep it for about a four star rye for me. Okay. So what am I going to get today in the regular lot 40? Now, as I said, this is, you know, undisclosed age, but 100% rye. Actually, it's the same distillate, but only in the number two, released also at only 43% instead of 48. Surprisingly different nose. Much more light cinnamons, much, uh, a little more vanilla. Yeah. Yeah, I, I still got that spicy, like, okay, it's a rye, but but a little more slight caramel, but more vanilla. Interesting. Far richer fruits on that. Absolutely. On the palate. Similar experience, significantly less fruits in the palate, but when I do get fruit, they are a lighter variety. Um, how would I describe them? I, in the past, I have said, oh yeah, some cherry and whatnot. So there is some of that, that light maraschino cherry. Okay, I'd go with that. Um, so there is some fruiting in here and, and there is spicing in here, but it is, um, uh, you know, lighter, brighter cinnamons, not cooked and dark. And, and less cracked pepper for me, for sure. The finish is smoother. Now, it is a lighter drink, right? We're 43 instead of 48, um, but it, it's a little cleaner in the finish. It's not as drying and puckering. Um, it has some, some nice, just kind of a gentle, uh, I've never described Lot 40 as gentle, but in this comparison, it is a little bit. Hmm, interesting. I want to finish with a little of this again. Rich, but slightly artificial fruit. Lots. It's quite expressive and chewier. And maybe now because I've had 
a fair amount of rye in this last couple of minutes. It's a little less spicy than my first pal was going in. I really hate to say which one I prefer in the moment. I love this dark oak. Glad to have it. You know, I just got this. It was on sale and it is about $30 less. It's almost like this bottle is almost twice as much in my market as this bottle over here. I really like this. In fact, in this sitting, I could almost give this, well, I have, I've given it four and a quarter. I know that. This is a great rye. And if you can't get the dark oak, I don't think you should feel that bad. But if you can get the dark oak and you like rye, I really think you owe it to yourself to try it. This is a good bottle. But this is just uh, almost more balanced, if I may. Wow. I don't know if I would thought, honestly, when I first opened it, I was sure I was not going there. Uh, thank you for joining me, you guys. I, I hope you've had a, um, a decent week. Uh, and the beginning of your weekend has come together well. Maybe you got a few of those chores done. And I hope I get a little bit of time tomorrow to shoot some samples. Thanks for joining me. Have a great week.